And here we go. Okay. Uh, actually, I think it says low-cost sensors, but I'm not going to talk about that. But there is my low-cost sensor is back on the table on the left, and basically just measures EC and temperature, and uh, about a hundred dollars, a couple, a hundred dollars for the actual sensor plus Mayfly. Uh, Shannon showed it to me. Actually, gave it to me. I took it home. He said. Oh, it's got a thermocouple in it. I said, oh, I got to put in that thermocouple amp. And no, it's a it's a RTD, 10K RTD. And I put one resistor, goes into A0 on the Mayfly, and we're done. <laughs> so it's, uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to write that up. So uh, stand by on that. So, uh, anyway, um, what I wanted to talk about was Phragmitis invasion into Great Marsh. In fact, um, we have a summer intern that's going to be looking into that. He's right over there. Wave, Logan. So, um, and it started out with basically concerns about the turnpike, uh, the salt runoff, and all the crap that comes off the turnpike into the marsh, and also 401. So, <clears throat> uh, we were actually going to remediate, work with the turnpike. Uh, offered them a remediation bank, and we worked out a plan, uh, sent out a letter, said we were willing to do this with uh, the proviso that they would mitigate the phragmitis, which is not a trivial task. So uh, we figured it all out. And I, anyway, the bottom line was the turnpike said thanks, but no thanks. So they weren't interested. So we applied for to Cornell. We have applied. Uh, for like a $20,000 grant, uh, which we should hear any day now, but right now. <laughs> so in the meantime, we're just gathering conductivity data to look at what happens <clears throat> on an event, particularly with the phragmitis. Phragmitis is salt tolerant, and actually the runoff, and it actually takes the salt into the soil <laughs> and promote it, it modifies the soil. so. The phragmitis is all that grows, so it clearly is evasive. Um, so one of our tab, basically, we're going to develop baseline data. And I was going to, let's see, let's do this one. Let's see if that works. This is a video that we took. In fact, this is the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Let me go to full scale here. Pennsylvania Turnpike. This is looking actually down that way, Great Marsh. Um, and we come up on, let me see. Right here, if you see the blue, is this a, my arrow? Yeah. Yep. Uh, this sort of a light blue is a phragmitis infestation. And, you know, my father bought this property back in the 50s. Uh, there was phragmitis there, but clearly it's expanding. So I'll just stop it here. So this is what we were looking at, and this is a turnpike. And so right here, I put one of these conductivity sensors. It's right at a culvert, and we'll see that. And then I have another one down about here, um, just to, you know, as a comparison. But um, we, if we get the grant, basically. The plan, you've got to nuke this the first year, go back with backpack, and then start planning uh, something else. But it, it's a process. So anyway, continuing, uh, we can jump ahead. So OK, now this is the far end of our property. Let me go back a little bit. Oops. About here. Not where, OK. Well, so basically, when now we're down as the marsh is tapering down, um, this is sort of the end of the Great Marsh. This is actually on Nature Conservancy property. Um, in fact, here here you can see where we're at. Um, we can we can jump down to here. You see more phragmitis. So it's it's a real issue and. Pretty much what we're trying to do is collect baseline data. Let me just bring you back here. This is where you guys are going to go canoeing. 
that's the catwalk. If you see, this is our property line, and we built that about 10 years ago, bit of a project, but uh, you won't get down this far today. <laughs> In fact, this pond is about as far as we'll go today, um, in the uh, you know when we canoe <clears throat> basically spatter dock is pretty much filled in it's a little tough to get down here and i think you know there so this actually is a duck pond uh talk about how this was made i have some pictures my father decided to make this sometime in the early 60s and well you can't get equipment down there so he has a thousand pounds of ditching dynamite he planted and blew it up and instant duck pond and it, since then has changed you can see it in the maps you know the water has moved around but um let me get out of that and i just want to say real fast the station below that the usgs station the usgs uh sorry just cutting water resources authority was that is the highest scoring macro inverted site that they see in the county. Um, and one could say it's the great marsh filters the water. Um, so this was just another shot uh, that I took with the, my drone. But you can see it's very, and it's a rhino. It just sort of sends its own little roots out and it'll just grow. So, And this uh, is two of the sensors that we put in these low cost sensors. Uh, this is actually at the a culvert, and then downstream, and it's, it's, it's about a two-hour delay. This is a spike from a storm event. About a two-hour delay, it gets spread out. It's a little less. Um, <clears throat> this is where the first sensor is, and this has an SD card. This is how you get to it, but believe me, it's a bit of a trip to get to it. I'd love to have a um, online. <laughs> this is just uh, getting to my low cost sensor. Um, uh, basically, a Mayfly. This is, uses the Atlas uh, Scientific sensor. And I've got uh, there's um, the one I have over there is similar to it, but it's got an RTD, so it measures the temperature. So this then corrects it to 25C. And this. Uh, we were talking about uh, beaver. The beaver, and if you go when you go canoeing, you'll see the, some evidence down here of beaver. But this is just armored cable that I put in. Initially, they ran it across in the water, and about six months after they put it in, um, beaver, if they bump into something, they just bite it. So <laughs> that's what happened here. So, uh, Anyway, you can see this just this cable, and then this is a sensor. And all I did was take the PVC sensor tube, put a PVC cap on it, and the pipe is at the same level. So I can go out, just pull it up, take it out, clean the sensor, put it back in. And then what I usually do is leave it out for five minutes, so I get a spike. You know, depth goes to zero and back up. And said, oh, that's where he cleaned the sensor. And you can, in our situation. Since the flow is so low, you just it's algae build up this problem. So basically, pull it out, wipe it off with your thumb, make sure there's nothing clogging the uh, the pressure ports, dump it back in, and that's it. So we can go canoeing. <laughs> and I said, Yeah. You talk about it's talk about stuff from the dam. Right. Salt from the dam. Do you see ground up little uh, little flame rubber particles from tires that comes down off the front concrete? Oh, it's a turnpike. Yeah. No, actually, we well, yeah. really haven't looked at it. It's pretty much an example. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm guessing there's. I'm guessing it's there. How big it is? I don't know. Yeah.